So uh, this has again been a, a very exciting meeting in Barcelona. The highlight for me was the randomized controlled resource trial. Uh, in this trial, patients with advanced uh, hepatocellular carcinoma progressing on sorafenib were 2 to 1 randomized to regorafenib, an oral multikinase inhibitor versus uh, placebo. And this was a multinational, uh, multi-institutional uh, trial uh, which demonstrated that patients in the regorafenib arm had a median overall survival of roughly 10 and a half months versus seven and a half months in the best supportive uh, care arm. Now this difference, three months difference, is not just statistically significant, but it's also of clinical relevance. Hence, Regorafenib will become the standard second-line treatment in patients with advanced hepatocellular carcinoma progressing on sorafenib. The other topic that was again hotly debated was um, should we or should we not give uh, maintenance treatment in patients with metastatic uh, colorectal cancer. There is renowned medical oncologists that state that uh, maintenance treatment is a standard of care for all patients with metastatic colorectal cancer. And I'm going to let the cat that I back. I think this is absolutely positively Wrong. Now, let's look at the data. Let's look at uh, KRO3, uh, AIO0207, and SAKK4106 trial. These are the three most important, important maintenance trials. Um, what did they show? They all showed a significant increase in progression-free survival. Now, is that important to the patient? Not so much. There's two outcomes that really matter to the patients. One is overall survival. Patients want to know how long am I going to live. And the other one is quality of life. And none of the three trials, KR3, AIO0207, and SAKK4106, were able to show a significant overall survival increase. And some trials uh, demonstrated a worse quality of life. In the KR03 uh, trial, for instance, 23% of all patients had a grade three or forehand foot syndrome impacting quality of life. So the answer to the question, should we or should we not give uh, maintenance treatment in patients with metastatic colorectal cancer is some patients do benefit and some don't. Who are the patients who benefit from maintenance treatment? Well, these are patients with very aggressive biology, uh, patients with BRAF mutated cancers, patients with diffuse hepatic and peritoneal metastases. These patients do benefit from maintenance treatment. And then there's a, a large fraction of patients who do not, who does not benefit from maintenance treatment. I think it's key to understand that metastatic colorectal cancer is a heterogeneous disease. And to treat our patients well, we need to treat them individually. Now, another very um, interesting concept was early tumor shrinkage. Early tumor shrinkage is defined as a decrease in tumor size of 20% or more within the first six weeks of systemic treatment. And the question is, is early tumor shrinkage a good surrogate parameter for overall survival? Now, there's a variety of different trials, FIRE 3, Crystal Opus, um, uh, prime trial, but also the TRIBE trial uh, that clearly demonstrated that patients with an early tumor shrinkage, which is a sign of sensitivity to systemic treatment, had a dramatically better uh, overall survival compared to patients who did not have early tumor shrinkage. So early tumor shrinkage, I, th uh, I think we can say that with confidence, is a valid uh, surrogate marker for overall survival in patients with metastatic colorectal cancer. Now, the last question, which is always debated, is should we or should we not resect an asymptomatic primary tumor in patients with otherwise unresectable distant metastases? Now, to, I think there's, there's two key questions that we ought to address. Question number one is how frequently does an asymptomatic primary cancer become symptomatic during modern systemic treatment? And question number two, do we improve outcomes? Do we improve overall survival in patients with unresectable metastatic colorectal cancer by removing a primary tumor? Now let's go to the first question. How frequently does an asymptomatic primary cancer become symptomatic during modern systemic treatment? There's a very elegant study by the Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer uh, group uh, surrounding uh, Philip Pady that showed that only about 10% of patients with an asymptomatic primary tumor becomes symptomatic during modern systemic therapy. So it's, it's a relatively low fraction and certainly not a reason to remove a asymptomatic primary tumor in these patients. The second question, do we improve outcomes in patients with unresectable uh, colorectal cancer metastases by removing the primary tumor? 
there's a variety of different studies, one of which I was involved in. We looked at 37,000 patients based on the SEER uh, data uh, and compared two groups of patients with unresectable distant metastases, patients who did and patients who didn't have the primary cancer removed. And we found a significantly better overall and cancer-specific survival in patients with primary cancer removal. However, there is selection bias. The patients who had their primary cancer removed, they're on average younger, healthier, they have less metastatic disease. So we did, of course, risk adjust using multivariable analysis and propensity score uh, adjusted analysis. However, some selection bias will remain. And hence, we do need randomized controlled trials. And there's two ongoing randomized controlled trials addressing this very important research question. One is, one, one is the synchronous trial in Germany, and one is the KRO4 trial in the Netherlands. Again, I think the, the, the main take home message for me was, uh, or the, 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 what was really practice changing for me was the, the research trial uh, looking at regorafenib in the second line of patients with advanced uh, hepatocellular carcinoma progressing uh, during sorafenib treatment. This will be practice changing.